seems like we're all in a competition for who can get the most likes, the most friends, the most things, the nicest things. But ask any Buddhist monk who lives in a monastery with no possessions, no fame, what really matters in life, and they'll tell you it's the happiness within. Really, ever since capitalism began, we were in a never-ending chase for more money, more possession. And now we're chasing digital materialism, which is likes and follows and views There was this girl I know, and her brother, who always seemed so happy, and always had beautiful girls around him, and was a personal trainer, fit and good looking guy. Now all of a sudden, as a shock to everyone, took his life. Even though this guy seemed to have everything, and put out a persona of the perfect life. Was struggling silently inside. He felt like he couldn't talk to anybody. And he had to project this image to the world. And when we identify with these images that we're projecting and we're disconnecting from how we're really feeling, and from the people around us. When we are comparing our true life to other people's fake life, we feel immense suffering and jealousy because we don't know people's struggle. And if we were living really honestly, and we didn't just see the vacation photos, but we saw the laying in bed with a bucket of ice cream <laughs> posts as well. Or at least we're mindful that everyone has ups and downs, highs and lows, and that there is no perfect life. We can really accept those flaws within ourselves instead of hating ourselves and hating our lives. When we look back over the last 30 years and we see an enormous jump in depression, anxiety, suicide, and other mental health conditions. Starting about 20 years ago, when social media first came about and fully accelerating when the smartphone came out, when the iPhone was released, we can speculate about what change caused this but we can all recognize that the only giant change in our lives was these two inventions. Everybody wants the most likes and the most followers, and now we're not just chasing money and possessions and pleasures, but now we're chasing this digital reputation. So we've created a new identity of ourselves that we become attached to. So now we have our ego and our digital ego. <laughs> so now we get our value and self-worth from likes, follows, shares, views. And this is really the reason childhood depression, anxiety, ADD, and suicide have skyrocketed since the advent of these social media giants. And if that digital ego gets bruised because we don't have as much as someone else online, or we don't have as cool a vacation photo as someone else, or we feel like someone else is just always on cool trips and we're you know, stuck, stuck in our hometown or whatever, this shatters us twice in our digital ego and our personal ego. And it has re-magnified that sense of identity, 
that false sense of identity, mistaken identity, for who we truly are. And the more we identify with how popular we are online, the more incomplete we are. It's, it's one more thing to chase. We had money before, now it's this online status. And the digital ego is really just as false as our personal ego. And most of us recognize that these egos inside of us are causing so much suffering in our lives. They're that constant negative chatter in our mind. And it's often not just critical of others, but very critical of ourselves. And when we try to put out this image that goes even further away from who we really are, and we invest in this persona, we go even further from that inner peace, joy, and love that is within all of us, that has no object for, of focus. It's just that natural state of being. When we take away all the jealousy and greed and hatred, we're left with that deep sense of inner peace. And so social media is making all of that public, that resentment and jealousy by everybody posting these fake people because we don't really believe that's our persona. We, we know that most of our life is not vacation and these picture-perfect moments, but we don't see the other side and we don't post the other side. And so we're living a life in secret shame and underneath that is a deep discontent and guilt that, that really comes from living a dishonest life. And when we live dishonestly with ourselves and with others, we're creating even more barriers, more separateness, and getting further away from the oneness. Because there is only oneness. There is, since the first single-celled organism that split and multiplied and became all life on this planet. That is still one life which has taken many forms. And although we think that, you know, this species evolved into that species, really one life evolved into every species. And when we fixate on the separateness because we've put up these walls and barriers, we don't see the connection. And we feel lonely and isolated. And the more dishonest representation of ourselves we're putting out, the more lonely and isolated we feel. And isolation is really death. It is often worse than death because, you know, you go to jail, for punishment, and then they put you in isolation as punishment for punishment. <laughs> and we are social creatures, and we need each other. Being with others is, is that healing energy. But when we put up these walls and barriers, we are disconnecting from everything else. And we are not living our truest, most genuine, authentic life, which means we're not fully living. And these digital egos, no matter how great it looks on screen, it is empty and shallow and superficial. And if we get to a place where being without cell phone service in a forest <laughs> becomes unbearable, we've really lost our connection to nature, which is also the connection to ourselves. We all feel it because we all sense that urge to pull out our phone in line, in conversations, in the middle of a conversation we're having with someone right in front of us. That is the compulsion. 
That is the addiction. That is the cigarette smoker pulling out a cigarette. And it's so easy that we don't even think about it. Because it's so common, we fail to see it as an unusual behavior. There won't be the guy passing out at the bar from social media. But there may be someone on their phone until four in the morning, until they're just completely physically and emotionally and mentally exhausted, passing out in bed with their screen still on. And this really is just, if not more so, as severe an addiction as anything else. Social media has become an algorithm that is constantly evolving to show us what we can't look away from to make us compulsively check our phones. And every year it's been getting better and better. Social media addiction is really the goal of these algorithms. They play off of our curiosity and our desire to be constantly entertained. And these algorithms are really great at serving up content that just makes us mad, furious, angry, judgmental, critical, negative. And the reason for that is it, just like anything else, creates that dopamine rush, which is the addiction chemical that we want more of and more of. We just crave, and it comes from anything that is pleasurable and stimulating. When we give a child an iPad or an iPhone or any kind of hyper-stimulating digital technology, we know it shortens their attention span. And a short attention span diminishes our appreciation for whatever is happening around us. And when we have lower appreciation, the entire quality of our experience of life changes which goes from peacefulness to when will this be over? <laughs> What's next? Truly these attention spans, which have been shrinking dramatically, is really the cause of so much of this anxiety because life won't always be exciting. Life will sometimes be exciting and sometimes it'll be boring and both of these are just part of life and we can either escape or we can embrace and when we embrace then it doesn't matter if we're stuck in traffic or a line at the bank because these are just moments to be present, moments to appreciate, moments to reflect. But we are instead taking our phone out and we are training our brains subconsciously that the present moment is worthy of escape, that it's not good enough. And this is really what leads to depression and suicide and anxiety in so many of us. No matter how intoxicating being online on our phones can be it will never compare to being here and now we don't suffer when we watch a sad movie because it's not happening to us but when we believe that things are happening to us in real life we suffer even though things are just happening and the same goes for that digital persona, where suddenly we're suffering because we feel that we don't have enough and we'll spend money we don't even have to get it because the suffering is so unbearable. And instead of playing that game, we can turn off that drive for digital materialism the same way we can turn off that drive for physical materialism because both are endless pursuits we don't have to play the game of craving and acquisition we can still play the virtual game 
but we don't have to play that mental game. And that's freedom. And one of the reasons there is so much loneliness and isolation, even though we've never been more connected, is because nothing compares to real human interaction. We are social creatures and there is no substitute for human touch and being with someone in real life and feeling their energy. When someone can put their hand on yours or put an arm around you, this is such a profound act of healing that we can never get through a phone. And it gives us perspective and we feel empathy as opposed to arguing with someone in the comments section. And we say things we would never say to someone in real life. We lose the humanity through these screens. That person who posted their new car that made you jealous. When we sit with that person, we may notice a sadness within them. We may notice the immense stress and pressure of their job. Things we can't recognize when we're simply seeing that digital persona. When we compare ourselves to others, we are falling for this illusion of separateness and duality. And we notice that we never compare ourselves with someone who has less than us. <laughs> we only compare ourselves to someone we think is better looking or has more than us or has achieved more than us. And this is simply the ego. So when we identify with this self-critical negative ego that always wants more and we mistake that for who we really are, which is that which observes our thoughts, then we always feel inadequate and we always will compare ourselves to others. But when we connect with our true selves, we discover that we are whole, complete, perfect beings, and that there is nothing we need to compare ourselves to or to achieve or acquire to be content. But when we really tune into being instead of thinking, there is no insecurity. There is no self-criticism. And if thoughts like that come into our mind, we witness it instead of believe it. And so we really just need to do two things. Appreciate what we have. And recognize that we're enough. When we build up these fake personas online, or we live our lives in a way that is always focused on how we can make the best post, we really miss the magic of life happening right in front of us. We are missing this life, and we are wasting our chance to fully experience this brief time we have. And so this leads to things like suicidal tendencies because life just isn't as good as our virtual life. And it is a shame if we spend our whole life in a dream world and we get to the end and realize we miss the real stuff. There are so many people out in the world. Some will think good of us, some will think bad of us. And there is only one person that really matters in that equation, and that is ourselves. 
just like in real life, when we disidentify with that ego, suddenly there's nothing that we feel have to protect with dear life. And it's a freedom that comes when we get off that hamster wheel. And when we do that, we see that life is beautiful all around us, just as it is. And we get frustrated because why is someone interrupting my phone time? <laughs> well, it's because it's all the time. <laughs> We've all seen the posts from somebody that says, I'm quitting Facebook, everybody. <laughs> and then about two or three days later, they, um, they're back, but this time will be different. <laughs> the key to dissolving our digital ego is really similar to how we dissolve our real ego, which is to first recognize how it is causing our suffering, how we are identifying with and becoming dependent on how this digital persona is destroying our inner peace. There is a withdrawal. There is a dopamine withdrawal that happens with social media and gambling and these non-substance based addictions. And sometimes it's the addiction that's the most subtle, that is the hardest to break. We all have a friend who every weekend says, I'm never drinking again. And this is the same thing. But it's important to remember that dopamine will come back up, that that clear headedness will come back and we can regain our mental health and state of peace. And step two, so that we don't lose ourselves again, we have to develop that power of awareness, that power of extended focus. And this is really best done through meditation and extended time for reflection and introspection without distraction. It's so important if we're going to have a peaceful, joyous life that we allow ourselves that time to relax, to decompress, to tune out all the noise that is around us. At first, we'll probably not be able to keep our attention or focus for more than one or two seconds because we have trained our mind through multitasking, through constant scrolling, to always be thinking and distracted by some shiny object. You know, what's next? What's the new thing? What's the next post? Over time, we realize that through developing this power of awareness, this sacred power that we have lost, that we can keep our focus on one thing. And when the mind becomes less chaotic, peacefulness and joy emerge. And the other thing we need to do is use that skill that we learn in meditation to become aware of our surroundings and to turn every moment of our lives into this meditative practice so that we don't get sucked back into our phone mindlessly so that we are aware of the urge itself to pull out our phone and check social media. And so every moment we are either training our mind to be here and now to generate those feelings of peace and joy and awareness, or we are training our attention to be split and to be lost in our phones or giving into compulsions and urges and every little craving and then becoming enslaved to these urges. And as technology gets better and better, that virtual escape is going to become more and more appealing and we will go further and further away from that source. When we identify so much with an ego, in this case a digital ego, 
will do anything for the ego to survive. Because the ego, the thinking mind, it doesn't have arms, it doesn't have legs. The only chance it has of survival is to convince us that it is us and we are under threat. It's so important to take back control of ourselves from this ego. And it starts with awareness. On social media, it looks like everyone has a perfect life. And so we compare ourselves to people and situations that don't even exist. We don't need to have the most money, to be the most famous, to have the most mates. We simply need to find the gratitude for what we have and to realize we are already complete, whole, perfect beings. We are the miracle of life. We are not having a life. We are not these physical bodies that are constantly changing or these thoughts that are constantly coming and going. We are that lasting presence. No amount of horsepower in our car, <laughs> jewelry on our bodies, brand names on our clothing will ever complete something that is already complete. Cells in our body are constantly dying and new ones are being constantly created. And when we only see these physical bodies as who we are, then we feel not enough instead of the miracle of creation. Usually the thing we're most afraid of feeling is not as scary as the fear of that thing. When we turn towards that empty feeling that we're filling with pornography or alcohol or drugs or social media, we find that the real emptiness isn't in ourselves. It's in those things. We find they are not the solutions that are going to bring us the happiness we're craving. And that actually, that happiness is already within, obscured by those external situations and things. Someone once said that if they put the source of happiness on top of a mountain, we would have discovered it ages ago, and everyone would climb that mountain, but that would be too easy. And so they, they put it within us. And it's the last place we look. That is the journey, the journey inward, where we will find lasting peace. Everything else changes. Everything else is constantly in a cycle of change. And only deep within us, we can find that stillness, that peace.